I just wanted to let you know I am on my way. Um, hey, it's been a while since I've seen you, dude. Things are... I'm not gonna lie, things are kind of weird for me. Like, it's just so bizarre being away from, from Vermont, um, being away from my dad. You know, we're really close, you know? Um, just especially since, you know, ever since my mom died and everything that happened, um, it's just, you know, it really, uh, brought us together. You probably, uh, you know, I, I know you're not as close with your parents, although that's how I know you, is through your your dad, because, you know, they were, my dad and your dad were friends, um, but, uh, what do you know? Anyway, I'm, I'm on my way, and things are good, you know, the acting's going okay, it's weird, like, it's actually been fairly easy to find work, I didn't realize that, everybody always talks about how difficult New York is. It's actually been fairly easy for me. I mean, it's not like I'm, you know, doing any Oscar winning performances, but doing some background work. Um, I got a supporting role, I think, and an indie that's coming up. So I mean, things are going okay. Um, but it's just so different. You know, the small town vibe. And it's also not different, you know, you see a lot of the same stuff, you know, I still see the old guys waiting for, for lottery tickets and, you know, you still see a lot of the same things. Uh, it's like people aren't really that different, no matter where you go. And yet they also are. Um, but I love it, like I do love the energy here, I love everything and I miss, um, miss my dad but that's really it otherwise I'm really glad I'm here anyway I will I'll see you soon maybe I'll do uh, for old times sake I'll do that bug psychiatrist bit I like to do um, <laughs> we'll see anyway I'll uh, I'll see you in a bit Jacob all right peace bro <laughs>
Tom. I was on my way over to your house and passing by the train station. I found myself turning in and stopping because this is where it all happened, where my son hopped aboard a southbound train to New York, the city of his dreams, leaving small town Vermont for the megalopolis of New York. It was a long apprenticeship, a long time coming, going to the Big Apple to pursue his dreams of breaking into movies, TV shows, and whatever else is worth breaking into, leaving his old dad in the dust. Something I'm fine with, mind you. I have always thought if the sky opened up and a voice commanded, it's either you or your son, I'd have gladly given up my place on planet Earth. I always wanted him to succeed. He's got the talent. Seen that since he was a kid. He's got the drive. Watching from the wings as he developed into an actor, a writer, a singer, and even a rapper it was all inspiring recording radio shows in his room entering talent contests with his bug psychiatrist routines <laughs> making up stories even before he could write come on dad he would say type faster college productions from the time he was 12 community theater, traveling around New England to appear in indie movies. So get on board that 805 and don't look back. No plan B, full steam ahead. It's now or never, and the time is now. All aboard? Well, Tom. It'll sure be strange coming over without my son and your son Jacob absent. Perhaps we'll just toast their empty chairs. Jacob, how's it going? Um, I, uh, I just wrapped the, uh, the movie shoot. Um, I'm over here in, uh, in Queens. It went really well. Uh, things have been really good, like really busy, um, which is interesting. Um, you know, I wasn't sure with uh, you know, everything that happened with COVID what, what work would be like, but actually I've been pretty, pretty busy, pretty productive. Um, I'm actually thinking, um, you know, maybe um, after we watch a movie tonight, we could head over to um, to the uh, comedy club over in um, over in Bushwick. There actually, uh, there's uh, there's where I was, and I was actually thinking of um, of doing my bug psychiatrist routine. See how that would work out uh, for the Bushwick crowd. So um, yeah, just. Um, let me know what you think. Um, and um, about to pass by one of my favorite 
Groucho Marx quotes. I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. You know, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I still, uh, there's a, I don't know about you, um, but there is a part of me that, that misses Vermont. Uh, mostly the family, um, my, mostly my dad. And like I said, I know you weren't as close, although apparently my dad and your dad have been hanging out a lot. So that's, uh, that's kind of cool. But um, yeah, I will, uh, I'll talk to you later because I'm about to uh, get on the subway. So um, yeah, um, talk to you later and um, see you tonight. And hopefully uh, we'll also see uh, the, uh, the bug psychiatrist. Um, yeah, <laughs> see ya. Thank you for dinner the other night. That was that was really fun. Uh, I enjoyed the conversations about our sons. Uh, and I mentioned something about the work that my son and I did together. And so I thought I would show you a couple of these things. One is uh, a play. Uh, this is something that we did annually in our town, uh, Christmas Carol. And we did it as Reader's Theater. So uh, we had scripts. We were in full costume, not like in the photo which shows the rehearsal. And we acted it out and we did all the parts. So uh, I started off as Scrooge and ended up as Scrooge. Uh, not a big haul for me since I was the oldest guy. Uh, my son played a very convincing Tiny Tim in the beginning and then he played a convincing Scrooge at the end because he was eight years older. The, uh, the next, uh, next uh, thing we did together was a musical, a Three Penny Opera. And here we are on uh, on stage after a performance. And my son played Filch, and I played Mr. Peachum. And it was a real musical with real singing and dancing, and quite a challenge. Particularly toward the end of the show, I uh, broke the fourth wall and sang directly to the audience. It was uh, quite a challenge and very exciting. Another show that we did together uh, was Twelfth Night. Uh, my son played Festy and I played Sir Toby Belch. Uh, you can see I'm rather typecast. We did a lot of Shakespeare, summer Shakespeare, here in the community where we live. And this, this particular show is remembered very fondly by me. It was a, a very, a very sweet, uh, a sweet uh, interaction uh, between the two of us. There was I guess a bridge show, you could say. Uh, my son wrote a one-man show, and it was done on stage first, and then filmed. And that led to, I guess, a, a liking for doing movies. And one of the first films he did was uh, all for you. And my son played 
a young man who befriended a homeless young woman and, and tried to help her. It was uh, quite a moving, quite a moving show. Another, another film that he did, and I had also had the opportunity to be in this, uh, was Push and Pull. And this was made by a young filmmaker who was a devotee of John Cassavetes. So he loved improvisation. He gave us the parameters of where, what we were doing, where we started, where we ended, and then ready, set, go. Uh, we improvised, improvised the, the script, which was a challenging, uh, which was challenging and uh, rather uh, exciting, particularly uh, the final scene, which was the dad, me, trying to prevent my son from leaving home. I did it first verbally and then physically, which was one of the hardest roles I've ever tried. It felt very uh, uncharacteristic and I learned a lot, like how not to be. <laughs> so there you have it. Some of the things uh, I, I mentioned uh, during our dinner and uh, that I wanted to show you. I uh, also, also one thing I didn't mention, but another thing he's, uh, he's uh, very good at uh, is as a rapper. And I've, uh, he, he, his handle is uh, Chrome's Homes, and I've attended many of his performances. I don't think he's doing it so much now. He's, he's doing a lot of other things. But it's very exciting, and uh, I'm very proud of him, uh, what he's done in the past, what he's doing now, and I look forward to what he's going to be doing in the future. I also really enjoyed our conversation about our sons, and I hope we can continue uh, this dialogue. And I would like to uh, invite you over for dinner sometime when you're, when you're uh, free, and uh, perhaps we can continue our conversation. So thank you, Tom and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Nice to see you. 
I heard from Tom, who heard from his son, that you were concerned about me. <sighs> Sounds like the old telephone game, doesn't it? Well, I understand. You have been such a major part of my life for so many years. No doubt about that. And always will be. That's a given. Once a papa bear, always a papa bear. But I will persevere and find new projects so I won't become that lonely old fellow sitting at the end of the bar. In fact, I have three I'm working on now. The first is a book of sonnets. Here's a recent one. Starting out again. You drink coffee, everything else grim. The hills across the lake from where you lie, covered with dark trees that know where you've been, that rise up to greet a threatening sky, reminding you of things you try to hide. Careless actions that follow to this place, memories that take a lot to abide, that tipple the scales in their need for grace. But there comes that day when you start anew, a quick intake of air, flesh starts to mesh. A smile pushes aside those long-faced blues. You need the gratefulness that comes with fresh. The sky washes the trees in real sunset. Your far-flung dreams have finally been met. Well, I've written about 150 sonnets so far, and I'm ordering them into a collection. The second project is a children's book. It starts out, Jesse was a big city boy, not because he chose to be, but quite simply because that was where his father lived. Jesse made the most of it, though, getting away from the hot, noisy block every chance he got. For Jesse, you see, proudly wore the badge of the bicyclist, pants rolled up halfway to the knee. I have an artist friend who's working on some illustrations. And finally, I'm finishing that novel I've been working on since who knows when. The one that begins, Why did he write? Or perhaps he should say, try to write. For his greatest effort was spent not in sitting down at the keyboard, but in not sitting down. Walker spent hours punishing himself for being so spineless and undisciplined. Even now, with only the first page of cataloging his museum of artifacts barely begun, the golden couch beckoned. Come, stretch out, relax, rest, sleep forget. And if this did not succeed in failure, there was always, and why should this day be different from any other? Plus, I'm back at the old lemonade stand, teaching writing at the local college. So, things are not so grim for me, Indeed, it's a carnival, a shopping spree of possibilities, of things going on. It's just a matter of keeping on, keeping on, and exploring what's new coming down the pike, smooth sailing until my time grows ripe. But that won't happen for a long time yet. I'm going to keep my options open, and on that you can bet. So much for my little doggerel of howling at the moon. 
Here's hoping we can get together again real soon. Well, there you have it. All my news that's fit to print. Ball is in your court, son. Whoop. What do you think? Well, Dad, that's wonderful to hear. I'm so glad things are going well and you got so many different projects happening. Um, I definitely remember that novel um, about Walker. And I look forward to seeing where it goes and uh, if he ever does actually sit down to write. Um, things are going great for me. Um, I just did an indie movie. Uh, it's called Magenta. And I play the role of Wolfgang the Clown and um, kind of a crazy clown in a, uh, in a mental institution. And it's kind of an experimental film. It's uh, by an up-and-coming filmmaker named Marcus Montage. And um, I really had a good experience with it. And I am, I'm also doing uh, some stand-up comedy, actually, and as, as well as uh, going back to, to rapping a little bit under my name, Chromes Holmes. Uh, I did the Bug Psychiatrist recently for the uh, uh, crowd in a comedy club in Bushwick, and it went off. Uh, it went off pretty well, actually. I'm pretty happy with it. But mostly, I'm just really happy to hear from you. I'm glad that things are going so great. Uh, I definitely, definitely miss you a lot. Um, but it's. I'm also happy to be here and happy to be working a lot. I was thinking that maybe we could get together uh, maybe virtually like we're doing now and maybe do a short film um, about our experience, about our long goodbye and how in many ways the long goodbye is more of a hello, a hello to, <laughs> to new experiences. For life is not so grim for me. Indeed, it's a carnival of mystery and fantasy. New experiences round the bend, opening its doors like cafe of old, an old hearts cafe filled with colorful characters, ostracized Jacob, Rico, Marcus Montage, the bug psychiatrist, and more, talking aloud alone under a city canopy of lights, rain and neon comes down, quenches the thirst of the hungry. I look forward to doing this film with you, if we do it. Either way though, I was thinking about this poem we wrote, duet for father and son. When I was 16, when I was 61, do you remember it? We should, uh, we should maybe include that in the movie. Anyway, balls in your court. Woo! <laughs> what do you think? The year I was 16. And I was 61. We wrote a poem. Words that fit into something of a poem category. Minds focused on strengths. Until we realized we had weaknesses. Speakers shared words and took the listeners for granted. Deaths swung out of focus in my life and into focus in other people's lives. People pretended to be open. 
blood reminded us of violence. We didn't think that it was blood that kept us alive. What we saw is what we thought. Tree scandals happened when art came to life, and folks might think you're dodging the issues of your life. Cats cried for their mom and milk and screamed, Ow! When I was 16, the world waited for Mars to make a pass again. People stared unkindly at you, though they loved how foolish you were. When I was 16, things happened, and other things happened to other people, and things that were happening to you were happening to other people, and history kept repeating itself, blah, blah, blah. Liberals spoke of democracy, and conservatives talked of saving the world. When I was 16, I knew how it would end. This poem, I mean. When I was 16, we wrote this poem. It fits into a poem category. When I was 61, I listened to my son read, and as always, I was captivated for years in awe. I recalled dictating his stories when a boy, so fast I couldn't keep up. Slow down, slow down, I laughed. I can't type that fast. Watching my son with his cat and dog puppets, performing the bug psychiatrist for talent shows, the routine that he had worked up in his room a disciple of children's radios, Steve Charney. Both my son and Steve had the gift of Blarney. Working on his wording and delivery for three sessions of the storytelling workshop, when it came my son's turn on the final evening on the wraparound porch of the art museum, he rocked in the oversized rocker a few long moments. Had he forgotten what he wanted to say, I wondered. Gazing toward the house next door, at the painted owl mounted near a second-story window, his previous story flew out the door, replaced by an impromptu story of that wooden bird. We sat in the growing shadows and listened for twenty minutes about the adventures of that wily old owl. Watching my son in slams in Burlington and Chicago, so different from the others, so his own style, his own voices, his own words, nothing expected, nothing the same. Standing in the Dog Star studio the year I was 61, thinking how lucky I was to be alive, sharing the stage with my son, what a blessing my life was when I was 61. When I am 61, I know how this will start. When I am 61, I know what was once my future is now my past. I will think of myself a little. I will recite the pit-pat patter of the rain. I will remember how I used to love the night, the night, how it was great for what it was, and the owls that were hidden in the voice boxes. When I am 61, I will hear no trumpets down Moses Hill. I will remember how people would create their own facts based on research. I will watch nightmares before they happen. Friends will warn me of high prices, and I will yearn for the good old days when I remembered being happy. <sighs> I never did notice when limbs forgot hands, unless they replaced them with metal, in which case 
I would admire them. I will remember Steve Charney and my parents and think forward to the show and will marvel at how different being 61 is in reality to what I imagined it to be when I was 16. The year I was 16, life appeared to sprawl out before me like a toy train layout in a hobby store. An expanse of track passed through a dark tunnel. Another skirted around a papier-mâché mountain, still wet with the musty shine of glue. A single track threaded its way past a lonely town, skirted down a back alley like a snake, and wound up at a door painted with a miniature paintbrush dipped in blue. Other silver rails gleamed by an ocean's silent shore, even switching its path toward a background not marked on any map, barely a clue. Nothing seemed nailed down. All could be whatever it was and more. Who could say which way the current flew? Was there an operator hidden from view? Were his mother and father members of the crew? Was everything about him brand new? The toy semaphore signaled red, then green. The power pack creeped haltingly open. The aging boy beneath his soiled engineer's cap, the back of his mind lingering lightly on the brake. Oh, the year I was 16. And I was 61. I love you, Dad. I love you, son.